the FAA has confirmed an investigation into the crash of Trevor Jacob is underway. We're going to examine the case against Mr. Jacob in this episode of Taking Off. Hi, I'm Dan Milliken, and this is Taking Off, a channel devoted to the aviation community, sponsored by Colton Mortgage and Flying Eyes. I would bet most of you out there know about the Taylor Craft airplane that crashed in California and the video released right before Christmas. There are a ton of videos out right now about this alleged, <laughs> alleged stunt, and while some of the information in this video is already out there, I do have some new information today that I'll share but I want to do this video different from the other videos that are out there. I want to approach this by looking at how the FAA might investigate this incident. First, the player in our story. Trevor Jacob was on the USA Olympic team to Sochi, Russia in 2014 as a snowboarder. He has a YouTube channel devoted to his adventures where only a few of the videos are actually aviation related. It's adventure related. A search of the FAA Airman database shows a Trevor D. Jacob with a private pilot certificate and no other FAA certificates, but I don't know if that's the same Trevor. November 24th, 2021, Trevor Jacob was flying a Taylor Craft BL-65 over the Los Padres Mountains north of the LA Basin. The engine stopped in flight and Trevor egressed out of the airplane using his sport parachute to get down to earth safely. He then hiked over to the crash site and pulled the cameras off the plane and eventually hiked out of the mountains, claiming uh, poison oak, significant cuts and scratches from the brush, uh, dehydration, and other stuff before being saved by passing farmers. In the title cards near the beginning of the video, he claims he immediately informed the FAA and the NTSB and that he wanted to get a message out so that other pilots would wear parachutes. And this past week, it was confirmed the FAA had indeed launched an investigation. Before we go into that, I want to talk about Mr. Jacobs' message about the importance of wearing a parachute for pilots. For those that don't know, most general aviation pilots do not wear parachutes. Now, when performing acrobatics, pilots will wear a parachute that is a little different than the sport parachute that jumpers wear. A pilot parachute has a, a, a round emergency chute that you can wear, and it's a, a little bit more comfortable than like the skydivers. The skydiver rig is bigger, has a second emergency chute as well, and pilots usually don't wear big altimeters that skydivers wear when doing jumps. Now, some planes are equipped with parachutes, most notably the Cirrus aircraft, but even so, the airplane has to be in a specific performance envelope to deploy with proper chance of a successful outcome. For the majority of pilots flying general aviation planes, wearing a skydiving parachute can be problematic. For instance, in my plane, a Cessna 210, it would take an incredible amount of strength to open the door and egress. Now, it's not impossible, depending on how slow I was going, but it would be difficult. And there are plenty of places to get hung up on exiting. And if you look at the data, it's extremely rare to die up at cruising altitude because of engine failure. At that point, your plane becomes a glider and can still be flown. What kills pilot in general aviation is when the plane falls out of the sky at a low altitude because of a stall before the pilot can recover the airplane and help it to fly again. Look at it this way. You could fall 50 feet off a balcony and you will die fall 500 feet inside your airplane and it's worse. But fly the glider down to the ground and you've got a decent chance to walk away. All right, anyway, back to the case against Mr. Jacob. With the FAA confirming an investigation is underway means most likely this. The case was assigned to an FAA investigator at the local Flight Standards District Office or FISDO near Mr. Jacob most likely. And that FISDO employee has begun investigating. I have learned that about a day after the crash, the FAA con contacted the previous owner because the plane was still in her name, that Mr. Jacob had not completed the new registration. And that's a good sign that the FAA already started their investigation immediately after the crash. However, history tells us 
the FISDO will not be quick about it. In the case against Martha Lunkin that happened this past year, you can see that overview in the video we did here. It was a year of mostly silence until the FAA finally did something. And I don't expect anything different here. The FAA looks at it from a regulation violation point of view. Only when FARs might have been broken, what laws might have been broken. In other words, people claim things like, well, his acting is so bad, it's proof, it's staged. Bad acting is not violation of the FARs. They look at accidental versus intentional, and that's a biggie. If the plane truly had engine trouble, then Mr. Jacob can be forgiven much. But if it was intentional, look for the book to be thrown at him in a year or more. Like Martha's case, the FAA determined her flight under the bridge to be intentional. And to make matters worse, they claim her transponder not working for that part of the flight to be intentional as well. She got all her certificates and flying privileges revoked completely and a year of waiting before she could even become a student again to work towards getting her pilot's license. So intent is the key, which is why if some people are worried that Mr. Jacobs might have filed that NASA report, you know, the get out of jail free card. Well, remember that get out of jail free card is generally based on lack of intent. That card does not work if it's intentional. Mr. Jacob claims in the video he immediately notified the FAA and the NTSB after the crash. And it looks like that's true since the previous owner was contacted the next day. That's what a pilot is required to do if there's been serious injury or substantial damage to the aircraft, which the damage to the aircraft certainly qualifies here. I'm hoping with the investigation underway that the first thing the FAA did was to request the footage, though they might not have even known that there was footage until he released the video later, which brings up an interesting situation. If he edited the video and exported that final and then deleted his raw footage, that will speak to intent. I'd like to look at his other videos. If he still has the raw footage from the other ones, that would show that deleting the raw footage is not something he usually does, which is why it speaks to intent. If he has raw footage of this crash and turns it over, that could be the smoking gun. What did those interior cameras show as far as the alleged, <laughs> alleged engine failure? And what footage do we know made it back to the editing bay? Now, he had a camera on the horizontal stabilizer looking forward. He had two cameras on the left wing looking at the plane. One of those looked to be inside an extended battery pack. A camera inside the cockpit on the dash looking aft at the pilot and a handheld camera inside the cockpit, most likely the one on his selfie stick. He also has a GoPro mounted inside behind the, the passenger looking forward that might see the instrument panel. That camera is clearly powered on on takeoff, but later in cruise, the camera is powered off. And it could have just died naturally, we don't know. So Mr. Jacob can easily claim there is not footage of the panel during the alleged engine out. Also, there is never any footage used in the edit from the left wing camera that's inside the power pack, but that's not a big deal as that camera would have been redundant to the other left wing camera. Mr. Jacob claims in the video he always wears a parachute, but looking through his videos of him flying on his channel, I could not find a single video where he wears a parachute. Again, the FAA could look at past history. Never wearing a chute and then look at the flight in question, he wears a chute. And he could easily conclude that Mr. Jacob intended before taking off to jump out of the plane. Just because Mr. Jacob states, I always wear a parachute, doesn't mean anything when he has never worn a parachute on prior videos. Because it's action, not words that matter here. Okay, hammering on intent, which I believe will be or should be the FAA's focus of the investigation, another point. Why did Mr. Jacob hike all the way up to the crash site? He had no water, no supplies, and he was in a survival situation. Why spend the energy that could be life or death to make it to the plane where he knew he didn't have any water, no supplies? What was his intent on hiking to the plane? Was the only real purpose to recover the footage? Why did he wait so long to deploy the parachute? 
early deployment and he could have glided towards civilization, a much safer and reasonable objective. What was his intent there? The investigator will for sure look at Mr. Jacob's logbook. Was he current? What was the status of his medical? These are potential violations here, and yes, though they're minor, if it's a violation, they'll count. And after they examine the pilot, they'll examine the plane. Many people have jumped on the public records showing a different owner. With a little research, I know for a fact that Mr. Jacob bought this 1940 Taylor Craft BL-65 about a month before the crash. What about the maintenance logs? When was the last annual? When was the engine last serviced? What was the engine last serviced for? The previous owners, they gotta be upset about the loss of a classic plane and will be eager to share all the information with the FAA investigator. And here's the kicker. This is the smoking gun, the evidence that tells all, in my opinion. The previous owners are saying that Mr. Jacobs mentioned on the purchase that he was, quote, going to do something special with the plane. Could be nothing, could be everything. I also talked with Max Gaverluk, who earned his tailwheel endorsement in this specific plane and has like 50 hours in it and also was an AMP and worked on this plane. He was very sad to see it crash. Max sent us this clip talking about the specifics of the BL-65. Hey guys, so this is uh, Max from Max Air LLC, the YouTube channel. I want to give you guys a couple uh, interesting facts uh, and just brief history about the Taylor Craft BL-65 that uh, uh, unfortunately went down. I uh, got my tailwheel endorsement in 2016 in that airplane and it's a Taylor Craft that had a Lycoming 65, 65 horsepower, had a auxiliary uh, fuel tank uh, and a, uh, uh, a header tank in the nose. You could actually see uh, which was 12 gallons and you could see the uh, fuel uh, indication and you could see off the left uh, wing camera that he ha did indeed have pretty much the whole uh, header tank full of fuel. Uh, other interesting thing is the airplane did not have uh, electrical so it was uh, you know um, it did not have a starter so you had you had to have hand propped it. That being said uh, if it had fuel and the nose was pushed over uh basically the airplane should have start should have started up again likely the uh, keys were in the off position and uh you know, it's sad to see such airplane go to waste um the airplane was you know in top shape uh, you know i i'm i being an ampia annual that airplane several times myself uh you know, a few years back now, not not the recent two years. Um, so I mean, it was a, it was a great airplane, you know, uh, for for what it was. Um, just sad to see it go. Thanks, Max. You can check out his channel here, and hopefully, people like Max will be interviewed for the investigation. And here's a big question: Will the FAA or NTSB try and recover the plane, specifically the engine? since it was a non-fatal, no injuries crash. I'm afraid they won't deem the recovery worth the effort and expense, and perhaps they're right. But I would want to read a report on that engine. You know, I'm, I'm glad that no fire broke out. At first I thought maybe he ran out of fuel or timed it that way. But from the wing camera, Max noted that the tank is actually quite full. The investigator should though look at the fuel when it was last fueled, if there was any water in it from other reports and how much was bought and, and how much the time before when it was refueled and, and all that kind of stuff, but probably nothing there to point to it as being a stunt from the fuel. But with full tanks, it was incredibly foolish to intentionally crash if that's what he did. It's not like California has had any issues with forest fires lately. I mean, that could have added criminal charges to this situation. And speaking of criminal, and outside the FAA investigation, what about potential insurance fraud? My guess was that if this was indeed a stunt, he would have purchased the plane cheap and not bothered with insurance, and certainly not filed a claim if he had insurance. Which, by the way, if he had insurance and did not file a claim, I'd wonder why. Did he know he'd be persecuted for fraud? That would point to intent again. The FAA will undoubtedly look at his departure airport, Lompoc, and why he flew his other plane there shortly before beginning this incident flight. 
you see a lot of social media buzz on him not attempting an emergency landing on the sandbar that you can see below him when he's parachuting out. I don't think the FAA can dock him on that. I mean, there's, there's not a FAR violation specific to that, but there are quite a few others. And you could certainly use the catch-all FAR 9113, careless and reckless operation. I know you guys are going to comment about that. But in no way have I covered all the possible FAR violations the FAA might find. So for all you who have seen the video, help me out. List them in the comment section. Rather than emotional accusations like uh, he had a selfie stick so he should burn, what are the FARs he violated? Because I believe this is where the FAA will look. And as for me, the preponderance of the initial evidence supplied by Mr. Jacobs himself in the form of a YouTube video, this should never be referred to as an accident. This was a crash, intentional and meant for attention. And Mr. Jacob is certainly accomplishing that. Is it getting the kind of attention he thought he'd get? Well, probably not. Unless he saw the outcry coming and still thought it'd be cool to do this stunt, in which case he needs help. And as far as pilot Jacob, I believe that they should yank his ticket permanently for such a careless and reckless stunt intended for media attention. I'm just so thankful nobody got hurt or killed in this. So I leave it there. We'll know more in a year or so. And who knows, maybe each one of the points will come back with a reasonable exp explanation and we were all wrong about Mr. Jacob. I hope so. In the meantime, remember, superior judgment, like choosing not to intentionally crash a plane, trumps superior skills. Like, look how good I can skydive. Flight safe.